Hi guys, you're welcome. Hope you guys are feeling good. My name is Bukumi Bikekran. So, what must I do to be safe? So, this is a debate between a Christian and a Muslim. Thank you again, Dr. Craig, for a wonderful engagement of the ideas that we're discussing. Folks, I want to respond very quickly to the points that uh, Dr. Craig feels are, impor are important in this uh, dialogue. He launches three criticisms against the Islamic view, and of course he supplies in response to that uh, a Christian understanding that would rescue us from some of these problems. The first criticism is that according to him, the God of Islam is not uh, morally uh, as good as in Christianity because uh, one of God's attributes is that he is loving, and in, in Islam God is not loving. He loves uh, not unconditionally, but he loves only certain persons. Uh -uh. But in fact, if we look at the Quran, we see that there are uh, what uh, exegetes refer to as general statements and specific statements. And there are certain statements which are shown to be so general that uh, they form an umbrella to interpret other statements which are more specific. Let me explain further. In the Quran, in Surah 2, God says, In Allah bin nasi la ra'ufur rahim. Surely God is tender and loving to all humankind. Now that's a general statement. If there are certain statements that say that God does not love certain persons, then that is the more specific statement that fa falls under the general umbrella. So God's eternal attribute is still there, that he is loving, he is kind, he is merciful. When Muslims repeat Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, they are continually stressing the mercy and the kindness of God. The Quran also describes God as Ghafurul Wadud, and that says he is this. So that tells us that this is one of his names, his attributes. Mm. This is what God is. Now certainly there are verses in the Quran which says that yes, if you follow Muhammad, God will love you. Mm. That does not mean that God does not love other okay. people. It just simply means that God is reaching out to people and telling them how to merit his love. God is giving us a chance to shake hands with him, to reach out. A hadith explaining this says that when a person uh, takes one step towards God, or when one goes one arm's length towards God, God comes to him the full width. Full and if one comes to God walking, God comes to him running. Mm. So God gives us an opportunity to participate in that plan. Uh, Dr. Craig uh, has read my website, and I'm very happy for that. Yeah. And he has <laughs> noticed that uh, on my website, I have an article in which I have repeated some of the very statements that he has quoted from the Quran. And I have never denied these statements tonight or any other time. I'm just explaining what these statements mean. When the Quran says, or I say that God does not love evildoers, it just simply means that this is God's way of reaching out to people and saying, you have a chance to merit God's love by not being an evildoer. Surely God loves everyone in a certain basic way, but if you turn to God, repentant, seeking his mercy, then he will love you in a more special way. Even Christians believe that God will send some of his uh, enemies, if you like, into hell where they will dwell in, in that fire for eternity. Are you saying that God loves these people in the same way that he loves those whom he will put in paradise? Now, Psalm 5, verses number 5 to 6, has been interpreted by Dr. Craig in a way that I'm not uh, convinced with. He says that, uh, that love and hate are not contradictory. In whose language is this? <laughs> in fact, he says that another way of looking at this is that God does not hate the evildoers, but God hates the evil uh. that they do. Yes, the yeah, Bible does evil. say that God hates the evil. It says that in Psalm 5, verse 5, For you, O God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. You hate Do all evildoers. This verse does not say that God hates the evil. It says that God hates the evil doers. And obviously, God is not going to throw the evil into hell. God is going to throw the evildoers into hell. 
So I find that explanation uh, disconcerting. Now, Dr. Craig tells us that, uh, and I don't mean to be facetious, I mean we're doing this in the spirit of understanding. I respect Dr. Craig as a great scholar, and I have learned considerable from him, uh, especially in the, in the manner of debating with uh, atheists. And in fact, uh, uh, since we met last night, we've been having wonderful conversations and sharing our thoughts, and I've continued to learn from him, and I expect that this will be an ongoing and continuous relationship. So we're just doing this in the spirit of dialogue, um, and let's understand that. Now, Dr. Craig says, all right, these psalms are poetic expressions, so they must be ex understood as poetic expressions. Certainly, there is a certain degree of exaggeration in poetic expressions, and we understand that. But what do you think that the Quran is? The Quran is a very poetic book. And although it says certain things there, we should, should not always take it literally, but we should try to understand it within the general context of what the Quran is telling us all about. So, the Muslim scholar came out to defend so point to correct some things the man said. So, he spoke about the things that the man misunderstood in the Quran. For instance, his dog spoke about the evil doers. That if God says he's going to punish the evil doers, doesn't mean God is trying to encourage evil. Allah is not encouraging evil. He's just trying to let people know what to do, the right thing to do at the right time. So he made one statement, he said, don't take every word, the negative part the Quran says, don't take it, take the good part. I think the same should also go for the Bible. Whether the Bible has errors or contradictions, just, you to just take the good part. So what you see in the Quran doesn't necessarily mean the way you think it. If the Quran says, no, the evil doers, it will punish the evil doers. That doesn't mean he's only going to punish the evil they did, but you will punish the person that made that evil, that did that evil. So Quran too does not even support violence. It does not support, you know, terrorism. It does not support all this negativity that we are hearing back and forth from all that is happening on social media. Anything that you see, maybe it's based on the person, it's done by the person, based on his knowledge. Any negativity you see from such person but the Quran never teaches them to do evil to do bad things no it preaches love total submission you know it's it's preaches a lot of things you get it so I just love how he came to give his explanation and and the fact that he didn't, he didn't give that explanation to counter or to mock the man, but he gave the explanation to correct some things that the man misunderstood from the Quran. And that was a beautiful one. Let me know your point of view in this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.